You're listening to the Small Business Talk podcast with Kathy Smith. Episode 54. Small Business Talk is a podcast for business owners and entrepreneurs who want a better way to run their businesses without spending years doing it the hard way. Small Business Talk is hosted by Kathy Smith, who has run the same marketing agency for more than 17 years and helped hundreds of business owners achieve their marketing goals. Hey, I'm so glad you could join us. Does your business have digital manners? No one wants to be that guest at the party. You know the one. You really don't want to invite them because they are rude. They turn up late, they eat all the garnish, and they complain about the fact that you have bamboo cutlery when they think you should be getting out your best silverware. You have to invite them, though, because they're married to Cousin Katie, who is really nice and always brings fabulous desserts. Is your business being that guest online? What are digital manners and why are they important? Digital manners, digital etiquette, or netiquette as it's often referred to, is basically how you show up online. It is about using good manners in all your online communications and transactions, from commenting on social media, to posting, to emails, to your website tone. Manners, simply put, are the rules and behaviours that we live by. Digital manners, like all manners in our offline interactions, are becoming somewhat blurred. What was once absolutely taboo is now becoming acceptable and in some instances expected, like Gary V. So why should we be worrying about manners, especially digital manners at all? Because it will set your business apart, elevate your status and in some instances open doors that would normally be firmly closed. Communication. Did you know that in a face-to-face meeting, 93% of your communication is non-verbal? And when we are using digital communication that is words only, we only have access to 7% of our normal communication tools. And that is another reason why video can help bridge the gap and make it easier online. Because we are increasing our communication tools And when people can see, hear, and watch how you behave, trust is shown much more easily. Podcasting and audio communication fits somewhere in the middle. You can hear my voice, the tone, or not, of what I'm saying, but you can't see me. So you can decide from my voice whether you're happy with me, whether you trust me or not, but you can't see my hands moving around and any other forms of communication that I may be using. Digital communication, especially emails and text messages, can often be misinterpreted, especially when we write them in a hurry. Words like great are difficult to distinguish if they are only written. Did you mean great in a sad, tiny little voice? Did you mean great? It's so exciting. Or did you mean it's great? Or somewhere in between. Without extra clues and communication tools, it is impossible from the written word quite often to tell. Remember to be as descriptive as you can when emailing, texting and messaging, as the person at the other end may not understand the context behind your words. Years ago, when I was a stay-at-home mum, I used to look after my son. And my husband would come home and I would say, oh, he said this and he said that and he's done this. And my husband would then have a chat with my son and listen to him. And he'd look at me and say, I don't understand how you can understand him. And I was thinking, well, I don't understand how you can't. Then I had to go away for a couple of days and I was listening to my son on the phone. No context. Now I understood, and I didn't understand as much as I thought I would. So context is really important. 
How to keep your digital manners in check? Now we all know what digital manners are, what should we be looking for? Okay, let's start with email etiquette. You've sent it so they will get it. Hmm, no. Never assume just because you press send or thought you press send, then the recipient will get it on the other end. How many times do you find that pesky email still sitting in your draft or your outbox? Even if you do send it, it doesn't mean that all the planets will align and the person on the other end will receive it. Always follow up. Following up is so important. Maybe they didn't get it if they haven't replied. If it's important, give them a call as well. And they might just as well say, oh yeah, I saw that. But they didn't reply to you either. Make sure you always respond to emails that have been sent and are not the one to say, oh yeah, I saw that. It only takes a second to send an emoji back or one letter like a K in a text, but obviously reply in a manner that is appropriate for the situation. But the point is to reply in some form. Another thing a lot of people do is type in all caps. Capital is used in one word can be used for emphasis, but any more is shouting, and nobody wants to be shouted at. Use all capital sparingly, and in some situations you can get away with using a little bit more. Like in headings where there's limited formatting options, such as in a text message, a text email, or a Facebook post. However, especially with Facebook, you can break it up and emphasise your text with emojis. In long texts, you could use capitals a bit more, but do it with caution and maybe break your text messages up into several rather than one big long one. Who's got time to read all of that anyway? Okay, that brings us to social media etiquette. Well, that could be a whole podcast all in itself, but let's just have a look at a few basic things. Don't steal other people's content and try to pass it off as your own. Do credit content and photos that you are using. Don't overshare personal information. Do be mindful of other people's feelings when you're posting. Don't post other people's children's names if they have not posted them. So if the post says number one child did X, then don't comment back and say, oh, that's so great that Joey did that. Because obviously the parent didn't want Joey's name listed. So don't you list it either. Social media etiquette goes for both personal and business. If you don't want the information repeated at a cocktail party, then don't post it. And remember, even deleting information still leaves a digital footprint. So those in the know can probably find it. So if you're not happy about it being shared, don't put it up there in the first place. Understanding different social media platforms and how they have different rules. There is lots of platform specific manners, like hashtags, for example. You can use lots of them on Instagram and YouTube and use few none or very sparingly on some of the other platforms. You need to keep updated on each of the platform's best practice and adhere to that. And in some cases like Facebook, if you put too many hashtags on, Facebook will reduce your reach. So just be careful. To direct message or not. Connect and then immediately spam someone with a sales spiel is definitely bad manners on all platforms. So stop and think before you do any of the above or comment. So think before you launch into that rage, rant or political comment that you were going to post. Is it in a good light of your business or is it better to be a private thing? I'm not saying don't comment, but just think about is it a good idea and is that how you want your business, your brand, to be portrayed. Sometimes on hot topics, it's actually good to stir the pot, but just think of it as an overall strategy 
and not just a comment when you're emotional or tired or annoyed or you've been drinking. What seemed funny last night might be damage control today. Don't try to sell all the time. Tom Hopkins, who wrote Master the Art of Selling and sold 365 houses in one year, said, Build relationships. You're in the people business and learning to make people feel important and cared for will help you both make that initial sale and then long-term sales over the course of time. Add value with your social media. Don't just try to get a quick sale. Don't annoy your loyal customers. They're the ones that actually pay your overheads. So if you've got an event coming up and you've got loyal customers who have bought a full price ticket, don't be going out and openly publicising now that you're selling them much cheaper. Recently, I had an instance where a friend of mine had bought a full price ticket. Then she had connected with this particular person on LinkedIn. They'd had a huge conversation at an event we were at. Then the next day, she got a message saying, Oh, I see that we've been at an event together. Would you like to come to my event in a couple of weeks' time? And here's a discount code. Happy? No. And even worse, because she had actually purchased VIP tickets and had been talking to the gentleman about that. Not only did he, one, not remember, unlikely, or two, had somebody else doing his LinkedIn contacting, but it just wasn't professional, was it? So now he's lost credibility. So what could have worked really well, a discount ticket, has left a bad taste. So just be careful not to annoy your loyal customers. Another way that people annoy loyal customers all the time is giving huge discounts to new customers. Hey, what about me? I've been there all the time. So think about ways that you can actually add to your customer base. Give them something special rather than always looking for new customers. And it always costs more to get new customers than keep your existing customers happy because you don't want them to be a new customer for your competition. Digital manners are really important and they really do make a difference to your business. So think about some of the tips that I've given here and I'd love to hear your feedback. Next week, we'll be talking to two lovely ladies about how to run a business that you really enjoy. So take care and I'll see you then. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe to Small Business Talk podcast and head on over to smallbusinesstalk.com.au forward slash downloads for all the show notes and links to this episode. Remember, to be great, you must start. Pick one tip from today's episode, take action and implement it. Let's meet again next week at the same time and place. Until then, take action. And SBT community, enjoy your journey.